Cassoulet, pan perdu, chilaquiles, some of the greatest foods of all time have been invented through struggle. I make meat slop. This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, The Hot Dogs is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaity. And Nicole, it is a new year. It is the same old us. People right. don't actually change, right? And I that, don't think so. No, it's like you, through your developmental years, you kind of develop your personality. You become the pick me kid in class. You were <laughs> in the gifted classes. And so you think you're special. And then you know, kind of. I went to one gifted and talented education class, but I was in like honors choir. Okay, honors choir. That's. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you crave attention all the Super. time. I get it. The point is, you are the same person. That means the yes. struggle is the same. That means you will need struggle meals. Yes. And today we're going to analyze what your favorite struggle meal says about you. First up, we should probably define what a struggle I meal is. I have the definition up here on UrbanDictionary.com, <laughs> which is my <laughs> Oxford dictionary. Um, so a struggle meal is defined as a cheap slash a, a cheap meal slash snack brought. Bought at the store, usually eaten by broke college students. Examples include ramen, chips and dip, and microwavable mm. meals. Hey, Kyle, want to grab some McDonald's later tonight? I'm running low on money, man. That's <laughs> Kyle. I think I'm just going to eat a struggle meal back in my dorm room. This has 80 thumbs up and six thumbs down. That's a pretty common sentence I would have said back in the day and also mm -hmm. still say now. Like, nah, I'm just going to go eat a struggle meal. And as the king mm -hmm. of we have food at home. <laughs> Are you that guy? Really? I, I'm I'm so hard that guy, especially because every time we order Postmates, Grubhub, whatever, it seems to be like $80 for two people no matter what you get. I do not ever, ever, never once in my life have I ordered Grubhub or Postmates to my own personal house. Good. Never. That, you pee, peeing money away. I know. Peeing money. <laughs> Nicole, you're urinating money. You're <laughs> shoshing money. <laughs> Down the tube when you order Postmates. Oh, Postmates man. sponsor us. I love your no, work. I mean, I, it's just it's just a little bit exorbitant. And, you know, I'm trying to buy a house one day. Same. So I don't think me, I, I know I'm all about simulating the economy or whatever, <laughs> but spending $30 on like on like a driving fee and like tip, and I can just go and get a pick it up with my husband. And we have like a little, you know, fun time in the car and we chat, but whatever. See, I do that, except I'm just cooking struggle meals at home, yeah. taking whatever grains, whatever meat, whatever flavorings yeah. I have, schlopping it together in a pot. <laughs> and to me, that's the struggle meal, right? Yeah. I think my struggle meal has a little bit of a different definition because I must say I've never lived on my own. I always had oh, my yeah. – I've never – my definition of a struggle meal is a little bit different than other people's. So I would say my struggle meal comes more of like from a pace, place where I've disassociated the whole day and I come home and I'm like, okay, I need to feed myself. Mm. So my struggle meal comes – more of like, I want to turn on a single flame or press a single button. And that's where my struggle meal So that's like a from. struggling to cope meal. This is the yeah, mental yeah. struggle that's meal, which is... That's my struggling to cope mental health meal, I guess. And that's say. a big struggle meal for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people talk about their depression meals, you know? Yeah, like Things where you one. can't bring yourself to cook uh, a lavish thing or <laughs> yeah. you can't even bring yourself to go out and get food. Yeah. So it's like, you got to make do with what you got Totally, at home. totally. You want to know what mine was when I lived with my parents? Heck yeah, I do. A quesadilla. Quesadilla. Great struggle meal. <laughs> Best Best struggle meal, in my opinion. I think it toes the line between struggle meal and, like, nice little treat for yourself. <laughs> you know? And that's what's beautiful yeah. about the quesadilla. Yeah. But tell me about your go-to quesadilla. So, I would, of course, use Mission Flour Tortillas. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I graduated. I would initially only use one tortilla and fold it over. But when I went to culinary school, I learned that you can use two tortillas. <laughs> and it was, like, the biggest trip of all time. And I would, and, and I learned that, like, uh, you don't need to use the microwave. The microwave is actually the worst way what to What do you mean you don't need to use them? Was that what you were doing before? I used to take a single tortilla and I would fill it with any sort of cheese that was in my house. It was typically a reduced fat three cheese mm. blend from Trader Joe's oof, with a little oof, bit oof. of that Mexican spice or whatever the heck that yeah, means. Yeah. And then I would fold it over the top. I would microwave it for 16 seconds, remove it. And because my pa my dad is allergic to pepper, did you know that? <laughs> no. I, I have very limited uh, hot sauces in my fridge. I would have my designated hot sauce and like my brother's designated hot sauce. So my brother's was Red Rooster and mine was Tapatio. So I would have Red Rooster, Tapatio, and and then a little bit of ketchup for a little bit of sustenance. <laughs> so that's what it used to be. And then I, gra I like matured and I realized, oh, I can just cook this on a low flame in a skillet. 
on one side. But you then, truly didn't know that before culinary school. Were you starting at that low of a? This is no yes, shame. This yes. is no shame. We're all in the same struggle. When I would, well, I didn't start taking food or cooking seriously until I was 18, 19 years old. Until mm. then, I was just like, oh, this food is magically in front of me. Cool, awesome. I didn't understand the way to cook. Yeah. I really didn't. And I learned how to hold a knife properly my first day of culinary school. And I wow. actually chopped the nail off of my op- opposing ring finger. That happens. So like, so I didn't know what I was doing half of the time. And I was like, oh, I can use a skillet and I can make it like crispy. Oh my God. And it can melt. Oh my God. So that's my struggle. Can I tell you what that says about you? What? Okay. So this is when you were living with your parents, right? Yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> and I was on auto and I would come home. I was like so, I was like so intensely like drained from school because I was on my feet. I was cooking. I was, I was being a menace to society. I was, a, I was mm. 19 years old, Nicole. Like it was different. This to me says that you have dreams of nurturing others one day. For real. <laughs> for real. No, no, no. Can I say this? I don't. From a, from a, mel- yes. from a microwave quesadilla no, and no, ketchup? No, no, Not the microwave quesadilla. This is you graduating from the microwave because oh. the microwave was always just the start, right? That was the yeah. stepping stone. Every journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. The microwave is your first step. It was my first step. But You're then right. you were like, I deserve better. You graduated your struggle meal because I, I used to do when I was uh, a kid, but we're talking like six years old, <laughs> <laughs> microwaving the tortilla with the cheese in it, dipping yeah. it in sour cream whatever yeah yeah but you graduating to the stove realizing there's something better to me was like i want to one day get out of my parents house (gasps) right like like it was an aspirational struggle meal i want to one day care for myself better on my own i want to one day care for a partner i want to one day care for children you know if that's in the cards for you is that like you don't talk about babies all the time is that really what you think are you just saying that for the podcast no i'm dead serious (laughs) like if i'm (laughs) if i'm analyzing what you were doing with that, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? That's to me what it was. You were Maybe. sort of practicing. You were almost playing house because you had that bit of arrested development living with your parents oh for so God. long, Nicole. So long. You know, and that's not your fault. It's really you not. Know? It was the societal pressures of being a Persian Jewish girl in Los Angeles. And I think it's beautiful that you were then <laughs> able to, you know, graduate up to that nice pan fried quesadilla. And, so and you, were, fried. you were always looking for ways to improve it, right? You didn't settle. For the struggle. You know, you went from one tortilla to two tortillas. Do I think that makes a worse quesadilla? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very ethically against the two. You do? I, I need the hinge. The hinge to me provides structure within the quesadilla because if the cheese is too Not melty, you too. Not if the tortilla too. is properly griddled and crispy and delicious. But if the cheese is too melty and it's slipping and slopping around, you know, you try and cut it, it shifts mm. off, you pick it up. I, ne- I think the tortilla to me needs to have that hinge. Well, thank you for totally discounting my struggle meal after <laughs> building it up so high. <laughs> What the hell was that, man? Okay, tell me about your struggle. I have more, but let's let's yeah. ping pong it. Let's ping pong it. It's funny because you see a lot of my struggle meals at work, and we're talking like <laughs> like uh, struggle. So your struggle meal is defined by how much protein you can shove into your body. Am I wrong? Kind of no. Okay, if we're talking about the mental struggle meal, right? Yeah. Um, one thing that I do, I, I used to really binge eat on like garbage foods. Content. Yeah. When when I was yeah, when when I was like struggling mentally, right? That yeah. was a way that I would bring myself back to some sort of happiness is just like binge eat chips, Doritos, whatever's around. Mm-hmm. And then some point in my life the modality flipped and I was like, okay, now when I'm struggling mentally, I go to super super clean eating, which is bad. Like this is bad. This is That's not an so endorsement. It could be it's a form of like asserting control. Sure. Like I get all it. these things in my life feel out of control. Right now, you know what I mean? Um, trying to plan a wedding, mm. dealing with family issues, <laughs> um, job. We have thousands of pieces of content floating out there at any given point. It's an absolute trip. And so sometimes when it gets really overwhelming, I make what I call meat slop. Yes, you do. And I made – do you know what's in the fridge right now? Do you know what I'm going to have for lunch today? Is it turkey? No. Okay, so it was chicken because it was on sale for cheaper. But I took <laughs> chicken thighs and I removed all the skin because nice. that's got extra fat in it. I don't need that right now. Not and then right also now. that's going to make the braise – Tough. And I took a whole jar of Herdez Salsa Verde. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cost like two seventy nine for the whole jar. Yeah. Right? 18 ounces. And I poured that over the chicken thighs. I put it with salt in an oven covered for like four hours. Forgot about it. Let it just sit out at room temp for another three hours. <laughs> and then <laughs> shredded it. Is that part it. of the recipe? <laughs> yeah. You just like, because there's no, it's not even set it and forget it. It's like set it, forget it, do a million other things, come back, realize it's there. It's Got absolutely it. foolproof. Just put it in a low oven. Just chicken, jarred salsa, shred it. Put that in some sort of a tortilla with Greek yogurt, mm. and that's just pure Greek whole yogurt. grains, protein, probiotics. And for me, that's like I am asserting control over my own life. Whereas before, I was struggling. This will now rise me like a phoenix uh. out of the struggle ashes into being a competent human being again. Hmm. Um, does it work? No, absolutely not. Yeah. So uh, you're all about about controlling the struggle. 
Yeah. About controlling the struggle. So instead of just being like, hey, man, I just got this ramen. I'm going to eat it because I don't have money and I don't have time. You're just like, I have enough time mm -hmm. to do this. And this is what I need to do to feel like I'm in control. That's and so total total amount of work, probably the same as ramen. I literally just <laughs> dumped chicken thighs yeah. into a thing, dumped salsa, threw it in the oven, walked away. Act of time, it's about the same as ramen if sure. you really break it down. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that immediate gratification. But for me, there, there's something like in that little amount of process where I'm like, I can... I am getting my life back on track with this. Do you feel like your life is on track after you eat it? No, man. Not are you all? kidding? No. Not this even is all. A little bit? I don't know. I Then why do you keep doing it? <sighs> because you know, I don't the definition know. <laughs> of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same a different result, right? I'm like a dog chasing <laughs> cars. I wouldn't know what to do. That is uh, an impression of Chet Hanks doing an impression of oh. Heath, Heath Ledger as the Joker. Mm. If you've seen that video. Yeah. That's a fun video. I like Chet Hanks. But th that's a new Cute. struggle meal for me. That's my like as a probably when I turned 27 mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, you got to be an adult now. That's a new struggle meal. Wow. Right. So what were your former struggle struggle meals looking like? Former struggle meals. Uh, ramen was a huge, huge, huge part of that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right. Um, but I would generally I'm a big fan of dry noodles. I don't need this. Water. I don't like the soup. Oh, I don't like the soup. Like I, the soup? I drain the soup. Well, I never made the soup. <laughs> what? I, I like boil the noodles and then in a little bit of water. In yeah, well, like in whatever water, okay, I boil okay, the okay. noodles uh -huh. and then I strain that and then I add it to a hot saute pan with like soy oh, sauce and I'll do like a pan fried noodle. Really go the extra mile. <laughs> and so to me, like you get soy sauce, you get ramen noodles, and you get an egg, and I just fry the egg in there and mm. kind of like really stir fry it and mm -hmm. burn the soy into the ramen and that was a huge part of my diet and that's wow. that's a huge struggle struggle meal success for me i think everybody has that meal like the, yeah. everyone's done some some kind of like crazy stuff with ramen i used to i used to remember like blogs and stuff he was like how to make your ramen taste better and some fool was like peanut butter <laughs> I, was, I tried it like four times because like hmm, i don't like this let me try it again and i tried it again, I'm like hmm, i really don't like this <laughs> And I'm like, let me add a squeeze of lime to make it some sort of like Thai Thai. Crack. You didn't like the peanut butter ramen hack. Mm, it's not for me. What are, What are the ramen hacks that really spoke to you? Because Roy Choi had his uh, my, famous one. My, I love to just uh, crack an egg in it. Yeah, that's my ramen. Hack. E eggs, eggs, eggs are a huge part of the struggle meal. Eggs, if if eggs were not in the conversation, it would it be a struggle meal? You no, need correct. extra protein. No, you need and, extra fat. And like eggs to me are. It was funny, Dan, uh, Danny Palumbo, formerly of Spork.com, yes, yes. he, he came to me about an article that he was writing. Go to Spork.com. It's a great website. Uh, but he came to me about an article that he was writing about the anti-ketchup on egg sentiment. And he was like, I have this theory that eggs are such a, a highbrow dish because people associate them with like French cookery and blah, blah, blah. Sure. Okay. And so I think people don't like you soiling this highbrow French cookery thing with ketchup. And I was like, eggs are the opposite of highbrow. I understand- yeah. Certain right, uh, the French chef's hat, right? They say the there's toque? one, there's one pleat on the toque for every method they can cook an egg. You make shirred eggs, is you make true? coddled eggs. It's not true. Oh, but okay. I was like, so excited. <laughs> eggs. Some people associate with the French, but around the freaking world, eggs are everywhere. Eggs are everywhere. They are the food. They are the protein that makes the world go round. Totally. From Pakistani egg curries to like Chinese egg foo young, delicious fried omelets, like. Everywhere in the world eats eggs yeah, and totally. they're fantastic and they're part of like my favorite personal struggle. Mm -hmm. I eat a lot a lot of breakfast for dinner, which I think could be read as a struggle meal. I think so. I think it's it's like one of those internal struggles. Yeah. Too. It's like it's like, oh, this is comforting. This is gonna jumpstart my day. But even though you're eating it at nighttime. Yeah. I totally Direct. I totally get it. But can I tell you what your struggle meal says about you? Oh, absolutely. The first one? Control freak. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I'm a control freak in real life though? No, not with us. Not yeah. with like the mythical kitchen, pe like the people of mythical mm -hmm. kitchen. No, but I'm sure behind the scenes you're like, oh. what? What have you noticed? Know? You, <laughs> you you've spent more time with me yeah. than like my fiance, than yeah. my brother. Yeah, right in the last Maybe five years. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the last five years. Okay, yeah, probably yeah, yeah. no, not lifetime. But anyways, <laughs> point is, do you do you think that my struggle meal, showing that I'm a control freak, is exhibited anywhere else in my life? Like, have you noticed that just? For me, interacting with the world, not at work, because I try at work <laughs> I to think deliberately you're not be. You're a different person at work than you are in like real life. Yeah, I do think Josh outside of work is a different person. Yeah, I'd say so. I think you try, 
but like it doesn't always work out, you know. <laughs> That's why I think I think I think you're you're like uh you're desperate for control and like you're yeah you're like, you're like stretching for control. But I think it's because it's, it doesn't come naturally to yeah. me. Oh really? You know, I feel like my life it's very easy for me to spiral out, so I mm. need to grasp at the things. And food is one of those things that people you sure. know do grasp at for control. Sure. And uh, I think your old struggle, Mia, was just like, man, I'm struggling <laughs> in so many different ways. And like, you were just trying to find comfort. I think struggle meals a lot of the time, especially with college students, mm-hmm. is uh, trying to find comfort and trying to find home in a bowl of ramen or like yeah. finding home in like chips and hummus or whatever it is. I think it's finding like, uh, it's finding humanity to me. Sure. Yeah, um, there is. Uh, you ever flown on an airplane? Yeah, I have. One of the most. <laughs> I like airplanes. I'm into airplanes. Uh, really? I love going on airplanes. To me, so okay, so I just came back from South Africa. I don't know if you all know this. That's a joke because they're giving me crap because I won't shut up about it. But point is, you will not shut up. Point is, sixteen hour flights, right, from like the east coast of South Africa. Um, being on a plane to me is one of like the most dehumanizing experiences. Really? You're just like shuttled in there like cattle, cattle. you know? <laughs> and okay, so on, on the flight taking off to the East Coast before we made the big flight, we had to sit there for two and a half hours because they forgot to bring the catering on board. And when they say the catering, you fly cross country, five and a half hour flight in America. They don't serve you a meal, right? They literally come by and what do they say? They say pretzels or Biscoff? Yeah. Pretzels sure. or Biscoff? It depends. What, isn't that Delta? Uh, this, we were United. Delta? I don't know. United has them. They can't do peanuts anymore because they Cause got the allergies, allergies right? Um, food allergies are real and whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so people get mad when I talk crap on peanut allergies. Um, but anyways, like you're there for five and a half hours and they delayed us for two and a half hours. I almost missed a flight just because the pretzels or Biscoff were not there. And then if you want to buy anything else, you get like a little pack of overly acidulated hummus for $10. To me, it is utterly like dehumanizing. And to me, a lot of that is because of like the food. I bring bring food on an airplane. Do you cook it at home? No, I get it from the airport. But like what are you like go to the Wolfgang Puck Express and you get like a lentil soup? I get a sandwich. I get some chips. I get some a water bottle and a nanner. And I just (laughs) I just prepare for the worst because I agree that airplanes can be dehumanizing and pretty crappy. Mm. But at the same time, if you're prepared, you're prepared. That makes sense. Also, I had a really bad flight experience recently and it just like totally made me like hate my life and I'm like I need to be a prepared person whenever I go on airplanes yeah so I mean like I was just stuck there (laughs) overnight and it was horrific so it's just it's just I don't know like airplanes suck but it's fun you get to go somewhere new you get (laughs) oh I like getting there it's fun but I don't think I don't think that like constitutes a struggle meal no 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 but I'm just saying the idea of food being an act of like humanization or dehumanization I think struggle meals I'm saying do you have a meal for you That like when you're not feeling like a human, when you've been so busy, beaten down, something that is going to like bring you back Hmm. to feeling accomplished, right? I've never, I mean, well, let me think about that. I don't think I've ever felt unhuman before. I've always felt like a human. Really? I've never felt like a robot or like a Oh my God, what the hell? What's (laughs) wrong with you? I feel like a monkey all the time. Do you really? Yeah, well, how many times has our director Ben just yelled, you're a monkey, Derek, at me? (laughs) Like, all the time. (laughs) And to be clear, it's an inside joke, but it's a Zoolander reference. But I don't take it to heart if someone calls me a monkey. What do you mean? People call me the B word all the time. That doesn't mean I am a B word. (laughs) Or am I? Um, I'm a bitch. <laughs> I'm a lo- <laughs> I will say, hmm, when I'm feeling really like like poopy, uh, like I'm feeling poopy, probably pho. Specifically oxtail yeah. pho. You want to know why? Because I get my hands in well, the oxtail. you make it or you? No, I, oh, you, yeah, no, yeah. no I, get, I don't know how to make pho well. Yeah, it's, myself. It's, it's hard. I've done it. That it's is just an not as good. Artisanal uh-huh. dish. But whenever I'm like, I'm like not feeling human, I like to get oxtail pho and then I like to just absolutely ravage it with my hands mm. the bone like mm. sucking on bones when you're when you're when you're struggling yeah. well, this is the best <laughs> that's the best but i say that's mine what about yours uh the classic classic californian very non-mexican breakfast burrito Oh, uh, and nice. I say non-Mexican simply because it's like tater tots, uh, some sort American of American like, cheese. Yeah, American <laughs> cheese and uh, bacon. Yeah. in it, along with scrambled eggs. To me, that's like that might be the single most comforting hmm. food for me. And, it's and eggs. I think it's why. I, and it's eggs. Yeah. It's eggs, right? And it's eggs for a reason. Breakfast to me is like a passport to comfort. Hmm. Also, a big old stack of pancakes that oh. hits that as well. I think pancakes take too much effort. Not to make. No, no, no. I really? get pancakes. Well. 
They'll make pancakes sometimes. Yeah, I can make pancakes. My dad makes really good pancakes, but I personally, <laughs> the act of me <laughs> pouring in the Bisquick <laughs> with the milk is too much. It's too much too for much. me. When too I, much. It's too much for me. I can't do that. But you know those little Trader, God bless Trader Joe's. Can God I just bless say Trader that? Joe's. The frozen little pucks of, of hash brown? Yeah. <gasps> Oh, mm-hmm. when I have no time, no energy, no nothing, those save the day with a single egg. A single egg. <laughs> That's what I need. That's a good struggle meal for me. Those little Trader Joe's little, they're like little hash browns. They can like sleep on like a little pillow. If you had <laughs> advice for other people, right? Oh, struggle man. meals. Like let's talk financial struggle meals. Let's oh, talk like man. cheap. Like okay. you, you got no money in the bank account. I mean, both of us beat poverty. Bingo. I mean, I wasn't like... Poor, poor. Yeah, okay. I'd be poverty. And you, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had, like, my parents, I was, like, middle middle class, a little bit low. Sometimes they were low. Like, your parents were high. probably, like, you know, frugal on the food they were, sometimes. Well, yeah, a child of immigrants. But of course. But their dumbasses <laughs> moved to Beverly Hills, <laughs> of all places. I'm so mad about that. Like, you couldn't go to Santa Monica? Whatever. I'll see that here. Here, 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 here. This is Nicole's struggle. You couldn't go to Santa Monica? Uh... <laughs> You're like a clueless character that escaped from the TV. <laughs> and like like ageless. Yeah, yeah. Like the Dorian yeah, Gray of yeah, the clueless yeah, 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 universe. Yeah. That's me. I'm I'm the one. You know they actually have the Persian mafia in that movie. Really? Did you know that? I haven't seen it in so Every long. Every single Persian was like, bro, look at these. <laughs> and then they would back it up at Persian mafia. You see that? You see that? BMWs. You see that? Okay, sorry. Um, Poor people. <laughs> <laughs> like if somebody does not have a lot of money, oh. they don't have a lot of time, they're struggling. You as a chef, what would you say they should make? And what do you think that says about them? Peanut butter and jelly. Honestly. Yeah. Honestly, you get the big old Costco jar of peanut butter. Yeah. You know, you get the big old, everything's going to come from Costco here because they yeah, sell yeah, the yeah, oil yeah. wheat bread in uh, and, in the double in pack. Packs, yes. In the you double freeze pack. the one. Yeah, you freeze correct, the one you're not going to use and then, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Frozen bread, it literally microwaves to fresh in 12 seconds. That's right, that's right. It's great. I think peanut butter and jellies are the, I mean, I grew up whenever we would have like a, like, um, what's that thing called? Like brown bag days? Yeah, yeah like when you school would, lunch? No, no, when you would, no, we would make them for like underprivileged kids and Oh, stuff. okay, okay, yeah. And it was always PB&Js because they were the easiest thing to make and they're delicious and they have a lot of sustenance and they have a little bit of sugar from the jam and it just gives you energy. That is actually a huge struggle meal of mine yeah. that I kind of forgot. I feel like I haven't made one in a long time, which is maybe good for my mental health or one. bad because I've made a lot of meat slop. You should make one. I think it'll make you feel really Today? good. Today? Yeah, I think after this podcast, you should have a PB&J. PB&J is so, so, so comforting. Oh, so um, good. And another thing is, especially if you're freezing the bread, because mm. I think you have to plan for struggle meals. A little you bit. You need to like stock your house. Yeah. And that's the thing. To. Cheese can go bad. Of course. Uh, tortillas can go bad. You can freeze them. Sure. Yeah. But to me, something like, I'm a big fan of the struggle fried rice. Oh, yeah. All oh, is keep. Huge. And not even when I was really struggling. So when I went through a breakup a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the time. Sorry about that. Oh, my God. It was the best thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, she's doing great out there, too, as well. It was great for all of us. You know, not no. Uh, I lo- thank you for breaking up. No happy relationship, <laughs> uh, you know, ended in a breakup. Right. Um, but point is, I was like, you know, going to Craigslist apartment, uh, lived with some cool dudes, but was really struggling mentally with like my place in the world and all of that. Course, yeah. um, this is when I used Tony Sachery's exclusively. Oh, because you couldn't travel with a bunch of spices, right? Yeah. And like, you I was in like, I felt like I was in a stranger's apartment mm-hmm. and it was kind of like dirty and literally the, the old dude's stuff was still in the pantry, but they oh, were like, uh, don't throw it out. He might be coming back. I'm like, what do you mean? I what live mean? in his room. Yeah. Why would he be coming back? Oh. This doesn't make sense. That's Point weird. Is, that's weird. That's was, a weird living arrangement. <laughs> I was in a weird mental struggle place. Uh, and so Tony Sachery's huge savior of mine. The other one is Minute Rice. Oh, well, I grew up with Rice Roni. <laughs> rice Roni sounds yeah, yeah, great, yeah, but those yeah, yeah. prepackaged things. Yeah. So Minute the Rice. Mini, the mini ones? The mini cup ones? No, the no not ones? the mini ones. The big old thing. Okay, okay. okay. So I was also trying to save and scrimp money because totally. I'd like buy a car because I was using my ex's car because we like shared it, but like really I drove it and so then I didn't know what to do and I bought a car <laughs> and I was in an emotionally vulnerable place. So I got upsold by the Nissan salesman and now I have this beautiful Ultima. It's a very um, beautiful Oh, it's what nice a good Ultima. Yeah, 2017, yeah, certified pre owned. Um, point, is, <laughs> point is, Minute Rice, and you take that, you have to boil it for like, Literally a minute. A minute. Uh, <laughs> hence Holy the name. crap. And then you just heat a frying pan. You throw an egg in there. And then you Tony Sachery's it up. You take whatever scraps that you have in the fridge. You take the Taco Bell sauce and the soy sauces that you collect from takeout. Straight up. Yeah. Of course. Anything. Any, you put ketchup in there, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you put soy sauce. You throw some peanut butter on it. If you have any odds and ends of vegetables, to me, 
like making the scrap fried rice. And we have a video on Mythical Kitchen that was shot during quarantine oh, where yeah. I went through my scrap fried rice process. It's nothing that would pass muster with the Uncle Rogers <laughs> of the world, right? It is not a traditional wok fried, you know, uh, egg fried rice. Yeah. Um, but it is something that is nourishing. It is hot. It is cheap, mm. and it doesn't go bad because the minute rice just oh, it just stays there forever. Rice and beans. I mean, the classic combination. Yes. It's like a complex carb, right? It's like when oh, you yeah. eat that, your body like processes it as like as like really good for you or something like that. Maybe, man. I, I don't know. I took like it's a nutrition filling. class in it's culinary good. school, and like that's the only thing I remember. She said rice and beans are good for you, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, beans are to me like yes. the greatest, and. If you are eating brothy beans to struggle meal, you're 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 a sexy girl. You're a sexy girl. You're, uh, hot girls eat brothy beans. Hot girls love brothy beans, but and they it, don't know it's a struggle meal. No, they don't, and, and that's what makes it hot. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and if you're a boy out there, this isn't gendered. Like, you no, can be a hot not. girl. If you're a Obviously guy, obviously, it's not girl, non-binary. You can be a hot girl eating brothy beans that's as well. Right, but that's the right. key is brothy. The brothy beans. They have to be brothy. Got to be brothy. And the reason why they're brothy. I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know why that became a thing. It just it just did. Hot girls started eating brothy beans. I think I think they would wilt kale in it. Oh, that makes sense. And the, and the broth would little, wilt the kale. A little homemade stock. Oh my god, some bone no, broth. No, no homemade. Oh, oh that's no, so they good. wouldn't. No, you, get, they you wouldn't go to make... you go to Erewhon, yeah, get the yeah, bone yeah. broth for twenty eight dollars, <laughs> and that's my <laughs> personal struggle meal. Twenty eight dollar broth. Um, some other things that are struggle meals. Cereal, big bowl of cereal, cereal. with whipped cream on it. I did that last night. <laughs> Asserting control Are over you my for diet. Real? Yeah, big old bowl of cinnamon toast crunch. You know, got the Sunday scaries. Cinnamon toast crunch, low fat milk, whipped cream on top. Is it better than cereal without whipped cream? No. But is that a good struggle meal? Hell yes. You know. I wasn't. That at what? All. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something offensive? No, Nicole? I just really wasn't expecting that. Um, chicken soup that you make from a rotisserie chicken that you picked off all the meat from. That's good. Rotisserie chicken in general is yeah, a yeah, good yeah. is a great struggle. Yeah, five dollars at the Costco. Yeah, big fan of it. Tell you that's it. You pick it apart. You put that in a tortilla. All my struggle meals are also all my normal meals. Yes, I've realized. So it's Correct. a constant struggle. And it's just meat and salsa in a tortilla, mm-hmm. and that's all I want to eat. Josh, uh, for I res- all of my life. I, I respect your. What does struggle. that say about me? Is that what that you like tortillas, chicken, and salsa? Yeah. <laughs> You're a cool guy. Hey, hey, Honestly, that's what's up. I don't know. I think I think I think you just have an elevated <laughs> like palate and those things taste good to you and they're cheap and you can make it better by mixing however you want. I'll give you all a fun little hack. So you gotta buy a jar of salsa that has a mouth wide enough for a whole chicken drumstick to fit in. That way you take the chicken drumstick and you can just fully submerge it and then you're and you suck it right off the bone. And that's my struggle. <laughs> Okay. All right, Nicole, we've heard you and I have to say, now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the world. This is how they rattle. It's time for a segment we call Opinions Are Like Casseroles. Opinions. <clears throat> is that the Seinfeld baseline? <laughs> no, that was crazy. And Jerry Seinfeld, you cannot sue us. Larry David, you either. Larry David can sue me. He's a sue me, Daddy. Uh, he's <laughs> already he's already got the FTX lawsuit to worry about. Uh, it's fine. He's he's so tied up in litigation that he can't touch us. All right, ready to hit that first voicemail? <laughs> thought, or, hey thought, guys, there, uh, <laughs> love the show. Been listening to it since day one. I love you. Um, I have a way that I make my ramen that disturbs a lot of people. (laughs) But spicy. Every time that I make it and someone tries it, they spread it on and it kind of continues, you know, it creates a contagion. And then it has come back to me from someone I didn't know. What I do is I I take the ramen, Mm -hmm. I, I make it with you know, all the regular stuff. And then I put the, the seasoning pack in about halfway through cooking it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I drain off almost all of the liquid. Mm. I Wasting crack an egg in it okay. and, you know, spin it around, give it the egg, egg drop soup treatment. Oh, okay. Okay. And then I drop in two slices of American cheese, mm-hmm. yes, a sir. tablespoon of butter, yes, and sir. just a scoop of cream cheese. <laughs> and mix that up. <laughs> and... Boom. It's it's Boom. absolutely Boom fantastic. Uh, I call it my Rodder's Ramen Cheese. Rodder's? And Rodder, is his name Roddy? When people hear about it, they're often disgusted until they try it. And they're no. like, oh my God. 
Mm-hmm. I think you might be on to something. So anyway, that is my uh, my opinion casserole. Uh, take care. <laughs> First of all, the, there's a lot of ramen discourse in his group of friends, which I think is so I cute. I don't talk about that kind of stuff with my friends. I t- oh, I talk about ramen with my friends all the time. Do you really? Yeah, I wish I did. It used to be hacks like that, but now it's like, ooh, we all have jobs. What's the best fancy ramen? We're all on the Shin Ramyun train. Oh, nice. Shin Ramyun, baby. Shin Ramyun Black. I had $30 ramen the other day. Where? Ugh, at this at this place uh, called Kazan Ramen. Oh, good. they're great. It was good. They're, it was $30. I, yeah, I, they have the Sichuan lamb ramen. Mm, I, I, can't, I haven't tried spicy, that. Spicy, spicy, That's spicy. That's the opposite of sharp. Well, that is a treat ramen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cream cheese and ramen. <laughs> you already know that I love adding cream cheese to like potatoes and <laughs> pasta bakes and everything. So I love it. I'm going to do it. American cheese is literally a, a government funded struggle meal ingredient, right? I grew Is up on it? the government cheese. Yeah, we have the, the brick che- cheese, right? Yeah, brick cheese, uh, kamad cheese, they call it. It's the commodity government cheese that literally everybody just got like a three pound brick of in the like the food stamp welfare basket. Uh, they were yeah. at all the food banks uh, because we have so much of it and it's very shelf stable. So American cheese, a huge part of me growing up and still love it to this damn day. <laughs> you can't, you can't, uh, you can't re- recreate the quality of government cheese, though. Craft American singles don't quite do it. That's true. Uh, American cheese and ramen with egg. That was a Roy Choi hack as well. What was it? Vaunted Chef Roy Choi published Incredible. a recipe for that in the New York Times. It was brothier and kind of based off the Korean pude chige, sure. which is a, a struggle meal. The Korean in army stew? The Korean army stew, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like literally from the struggles of war and yep. neocolonization. Yep, yep, yep. So I think there's culinary merit in this. And then, 100%. And then the uh, the cream cheese of it all, very much the BuzzFeed tastification Oh, yeah. food. Put put cream cheese in all your pastas. That's half their damn videos. They could launch an empire off cream cheese and noodles. Were they ever sponsored by Philadelphia? No, they sure. Big mistake. They didn't, big, they didn't need to be sponsored because they were giving them all the free Huge. money. Nicole, who, Josh, who am I? Why would you buy the, the cow when you get the milk for free? Josh, who am I? Big mistake. Huge. Uh, I, oh, no, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Julia Roberts are pretty woman. Oh, you know, I'm I holding was, my bag. No, I just, that man, when Jason, <laughs> Alex, you. When Jason <laughs> Alexander started rough, roughing her up in that movie, oh, I almost cried, dude. That was, that's a tough scene for me. It's a good movie, tough yeah. scene. You, you're nothing but, oh, and then he says, he, you know, does a little <laughs> anti, anti-woman anti slur there. Big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next opinion. <laughs> Oh, that dish needed scallions. The ramen. You put <laughs> yeah, some scallions yeah. in there? That's good. That's good stuff. Oh, man. Hey. Hey. My hot take on food is that um, Cheerios smell like pee. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Urine, yes. Cheerios. My nose. Yes. Mm-hmm. My nose thinks they're the same thing. They and are. And my husband agrees. And my sister thinks I'm crazy. Please, please, please validate me. <laughs> okay. I like you. Regular Cheerios cool. smell like pee. <laughs> I like how you repeated it as if we could possibly forget Cheerios smell like pee. Nicole. Okay, I just Google <laughs> Cheerios smell like pee and 153,000 people. <laughs> there are results. There are results. I, I think they smell like pee too, but... It smells like good pee, not bad pee. There's good pee and there's bad pee. We can all agree on that. There's like hydrated pee, there's dehydrated pee, pee, there's asparagus pee, there's coffee pee. Coffee pee is good pee to me because it smells like coffee. (laughs) My pee smells like coffee most of the time. Um, So that doesn't bother me about Cheerios, the pee smell, right? (laughs) What bothers me is that if you burp after eating Cheerios, it smells like egg farts. (laughs) And, And I like seriously, I could not tell you what's going on with Cheerios, but there are some weird bodily aromas associated with and produced by yeah. them. Yeah. To the point where I would never choose Cheerios as a main cereal, which as we discussed is a struggle food. It's for like kids. But no, I again the little kids love Cheerios. No, because Cheerios are for old they're people. They're easy to grab are you kidding me? Cheerios are for children. They they and for old people. It's not but it's not for people it is either for a four year old child like they had Cheerios at the Sizzler Kids Buffet. Well yeah because they they're feed for little kids. children Cheerios. No, but 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 cheer they have the big old heart on the honey nut Cheerios thing going, oh, This is good for heart well, health. Oh gosh, old people and babies are close <laughs> together in the circle You're of correct. life. You're correct. See, see, this is us. We're here. We're thirty. We're like here. But like babies? Old adults, they're like the same. They they wear diapers, and neither of them are bothered by the smell of pee. 
<laughs> Dude, I was I visited <laughs> my <laughs> I visited my grandma the other day in like her old folk. It's like basically a convalescent home. And <laughs> God bless her. You know, she's lived a good full life, hundred years old, but well, everywhere just would. smelled like pee, man. The whole place was just pee because you know, at that age, you're peeing everywhere. When you're and a child, okay. you're peeing everywhere. So the Cheerios, they don't smell like pee. They smell like humans. They smell like you. And so you eat them. <laughs> we're never getting the Cheerio sponsorship. We're never getting I love Cheerios. Cheer- Honey Nut Cheerios were my jam. That was my dessert as a child. Really? I wasn't. My house <laughs> was locked down. I was allowed the 100 calorie snack wells. Maybe. Oh, no. A spoonful of Nutella like a dog. <laughs> or Honey Nut Cheerios. Those are my three desserts as a child. I'm imagining your mom just throwing a spoon of Nutella I in go, the corner and you scampering I over. Go, going, mom, I got an A on my vocab test. Good job, <laughs> <laughs> Every time you got an A back in school, did you start tasting chocolate like Pavlov's no, dog? No, 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 but it was close. Uh, Next opinion, please. Hi, my name is Alicia, a longtime listener. I love your podcast so much. Thanks, Alicia. My unpopular opinion is chocolate covered pretzels with mustard, Boom. I think, are delicious. Bombshell. And pineapple do go on pizza. Pine- thank yeah. you. Have a good day. Hey, you too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pineapples on pizza. 100%. Chocolate dip pretzels and mustard. What's going on? There? What's going on? <laughs> I don't know Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny. Uh, they, 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 we just take a look at this right now. I've been watching it right now, actually. Oh, what a good show. Such a good show. I'm on season six, and it's really funny. Milk Deep. steak hard boiled with jelly beans. <laughs> um, I don't even understand pretzels and mustard. That's never been a thing that I've enjoyed Soft particularly. Pretzels and mustard makes sense. I was in. I was. I went to Oktoberfest and I was in Munich. Oh, you're talking about you. It's cool if you talk about your international <laughs> well, travels, but I can't talk, talk about, about my international it travels all the time. You know, <laughs> it's your whole yeah. It was exciting right to me. I know. I'm happy for you. You need to get out more. Honey. That's not mad lekker, bro. <laughs> Josh, you need to get out more. Go to more countries, please, for the love of God. <laughs> um. So I went to Berlin. Ger- I went. No, not Berlin. I went to Munich, Germany, and I had a soft pretzel and I dipped it in deli mustard or whatever. What color is the mustard? Oh, there. Yeah. yeah. There was yellowish. But what'd you brownish, dip it in? What'd you dip it in? And the gr- whole grain mustard. Whole grain mustard. You got all three with one pretzel? Yeah, they give you three different kinds of mustard. Wow, well, must be nice tent- being in Germany. Well, when I was in, <laughs> when I was in the this, in this specific tent with which I was in, yes, they gave me three different kinds of mustard. Is that okay? Which one do you enjoy more, Nicole? Because like you had a bevy of mustards. Yeah, you must have explored them all, huh? Is he trying to hurt my know. feelings? I don't, what's know. Going on? I don't know. What I'm I am not. I'm not receiving the information well. Um, uh, chocolate covered pretzels like flips. I think. I think they're referencing Ew. flips. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I can see chocolate covered pretzels and ketchup. No, I can see I that. Can't see that either. I can see that. I can see mayonnaise. I can see. I can see mayonnaise. <laughs> you know, a little bit of acidity, a little bit of creaminess, kind of you know, with that chocolate. But to me, mustard and chocolate are maybe the two opposite foods in the world, right? Um, as someone who worked at a chocolate store that was all about opposing flavors, we did wasabi and chocolate, which is similar to mustard and chocolate. I can see that. I can see that horseradishy chocolateiness going well. But to me, it's like it's the astringency and the acidity. Sure, sure, sure. That like crushes you. I'm interested in trying it though. You know, it probably tastes like because I've everybody's thrown up yogurt land after a night of drinking, right? I think that's just you. What? I think that's Maggie. No, come on, you throwing up yogurt. What is with this? You? Is not a common experience. Is yogurt land, your like drunk meal of choice. Yeah, man. Ew. Especially a day drinking. You know, you you get through. You like Ew. eat a bunch of sushi or something, and then Ew, you go the to creaminess. Yeah. Oh, no, you need to like. And you get the Dutch chocolate red. flavor. That's the best. They have like four chocolate flavors at yogurt land. Dutch chocolate's all the best. No. It's great, and then but then you throw it up and you get the stomach acid. Oh, That's what the up. flips covered in mustard would taste like. <laughs> All right, I'm next gonna I'm gonna go. Hey, Josh. Hey, Nicole. This is Ben. Hey, Ben. Uh, Hi, I'm ben. up here in Silverdale, Washington. Where's Silverdale? that? I just wanted to say, uh. so people trash on pilk all the time. Thank you. But honestly, if they do it, you know, use some rum chata and mix that with okay. Coke. It's just like there a Coke go. float and you're getting a little drunk. Hmm. Or you could use Pepsi too. I guess that works. Also, apparently people don't know what Coke floats are and have only ever heard of root beer floats. So try it out. The Coke float is superior to the root beer float. The Coke float is absolutely superior. I disagree. I, I prefer the aromatics of Coca-Cola, <laughs> Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. Uh, to root beer when it comes to I ice cream. I love root beer. So which, <laughs> which makes sense that I would enjoy Pilk. Pilk, for people who don't know, uh, about a two to one uh, milk to Pepsi drink in 
the country of South Africa, Nicole. They call it a brown cow, which is why I drank it growing up because my mom's South African and she would make it for me as a little treat. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe alcohol is a great equalizer. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you add a little bit of spirit in the uh, mm. in the you know in the cup, it it, it helps. It helps. I let it go down easy, especially from Chada. That's crazy. Nicole, are you familiar with the great nation of South Africa? Yeah. Constitution ratified in 1996? Yes. <clears throat> yes, well, they have, they have a cream liqueur down there. What a is cream it called? liqueur called Amarula. Ooh. And, and, and is Nicole, it similar to Amaretto? No, it is not. What but the hell, thank you man? for trying. So Amarula comes from the Marula tree, yes. which grow wild all over the bush and the bush you, belt. Okay, yes. Side note, my body wash is a Marula oil body really? wash. Really? Yes, and I smell, really? I smell like an am, delicious amber-kissed woman. Well, they make a <laughs> cream liqueur out of it, and they're not allowed to farm the Marula fruit. Sometimes elephants, Nicole, they get drunk off of the fermented Marula fruit on the ground. Wow. And they make this cream liqueur, and you well, will put from it- Well, elephants? And I will put it in- Coca-Cola, Did you, wait, similar to rum chata. What does this have to do with elephants again? Oh, because the marula tree, I don't know why we're holding the mics like this, but the I marula really tree, like it. it grows wild in the bushveld, right? Uh-huh. Out, 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 out <laughs> in, in the bush. And <laughs> and the fruits, they're not allowed to farm the marula. Uh-huh. And so people just pick up the marula fruit and bring it to the amarula factory and sell it. Ooh, but but the point is, factory. it's a tall tree, so elephants eat it. And they'll eat the fruit off the ground, and when the fruit hits the ground, it uh-huh. ferments really quickly. Okay. And so the elephants eat it, and they get all messed up, and they just start wandering around, and they're just like, hey, man, you want to experiment with each other, <laughs> you know? And that's what the elephants do in South Africa. What does that have to do with the rum chata? Oh, I put Amarula in Coke instead of rum chata, got is what it, I was got saying. Got it, got it, got it. And it's nice. I think he's right. Well, on that note, thank you so much for stopping by. A hot dog is a sandwich. We got uh, new episodes, what, Wednesdays on Wednesdays. on the audio and then Fridays on the video. If you are not watching us right now. You're a fool. You are a fool. Huge opportunity to not get more FaceTime. Josh and I have so much synergy that is so uh, uh, digestible via via video. It's crazy. It's palpable on screen. Like, my gosh, we <gasps> just jump off of the page. So you should really go check that out. If you're, But if you're currently watching me say this and you go, I hate what's <laughs> happening, then you can go over to Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> And if you want to be featured on opinions on like casseroles, I'm not really into you like writing them in anymore. Just like mm. call, like Just call, call us. It's so much easier. Our number is eight three three dog pod one. The number again is eight three three dog pod one. Yeah, that old email that you were sending could have been a call the whole time. I'd prefer a call. Yeah, and if you hate both watching and listening to us, um, go outside. <laughs> Pick up, a, you know, <laughs> pick up a sport or something. Put it between your fingers. Uh, we got Mythical Kitchen over on YouTube. Check that out. It's a whole different channel. We'll see you all next time. Put it between your fingers. Finger the grass. Finger the grass.